organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning to everyone out there. It is Tuesday, August the 29th. August 29th, 2017. Thank you all for tuning in to Community Conversations. I am your host for today, Quabila Hardin, and I apologize for my scratchiness. This weather change got me, my sinuses acted up, but we're going to move along, right along. My very special guest today is Dr. Richard Wang from Arkansas State University. He's a professor in the political science department. So good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, Quabila. How are you? Just fine. And so he is like our resident political person, like... Let me tell you, oh, I am really? not. Well, well, you're in trouble. <laughs> I am not a political, like person. Like when it comes to definitions and poli- concerning politics, I get lost in the shuffle sometimes. So, hopefully, Doctor Wang can help all of us understand a little more, or help us give help give us some insight on some things. Today, our main topic is political decorum, and you know, we have seen in since the election. And okay, let me start out by saying this. This is not about how we feel about a particular person who's in a particular position, you know, whether it's state or national. We're not here to discuss that, but we want to talk about how can we, because of how we feel about certain people in whatever position, how can we get back to a place of maturity and start having real discussions so that real decisions can be made that are going to be beneficial to America as a whole, or, you know, Let's say America, and then on the state and local level, how can we get back to a place of maturity and just ha- start having these real discussions? So I wanted to first start by um, defining what decorum is. And this is according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Um, pro- uh, let's see. Okay, decorum basically is propriety and good taste in conduct or appearance. So. P- political decorum, how would you sum that up? First, I'd like to uh, say hi to your audience. I'm and, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and thank, thank you and the station for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, you, you said, you used the word shuffle, right? We were in this shuffle well, and had to get out of the shuffle. Yes. I, I, I don't have any, uh, I have no ways out of the shuffle, but I, <laughs> we can talk just a little bit about how that shuffle how you might want to define that okay. shuffle. What is the shuffle? What are we in? Okay. Uh, and and then if we have time, maybe how do we perhaps get out of it? Yes, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, unless we know, you know, define the problem, we're not going to be able to go very far in, okay. in solving it. Um, so decorum, I, clearly, I I think it's it's a I like I like to start that way. That's very good. Your idea, I like it because we've never seen. A, a breakdown in decorum, uh, the likes of which, you know, like today, okay. uh, like the last seven months, we've never seen. This country's this country's uh, has some tough times, uh, and the three branches of government haven't always gotten along. And the framers established a system that that uh, they hoped would would preserve that. They liked the three branches not getting along, uh, is what I always say. Um, and in fact, framers, if they were uh, if they were able, uh, I think they'd be quite quite satisfied with themselves, happy with themselves, <laughs> given what's going on today. Yeah. They did the, they did some things uh, right. Um, they didn't want government to succeed uh, beyond oh. uh, certain levels. Oh wow! Uh, they had a very limited sense of uh, this. Is most of them, there were 55 of them. There were some differences, but for the most part. They 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 liked uh, limited government, okay. uh, and they wanted to see government um, um, succeed in 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 keeping courtrooms open and and uh, foreign foreign enemies uh, at bay and internal peace. They wanted stability. They wanted a you know, stable system, okay. and that means 
uh, you know, no quick changes. Uh, nature makes no great leaps, as the economist once said. Okay. Uh, it just makes incremental leaps. They wanted no great leaps. Okay. And they established a system uh, that they thought uh, would uh, would ensure that, or they hoped would ensure that. And okay. looking around today, uh, you, you'd have to admit that, that you want to call it a shuffle. That's fine. Well, it, for me, they that's certainly <laughs> are at that point. Um, you have. You have the differences between the Congress. Uh, you know, you have the you have the potential for a unified government. And in, in a paper, it's a unified government. Republicans are all over the place, and they control both houses mm -hmm. of Congress: the House and the Senate. By handy, well, the Senate's pretty close, but the House by considerable margin, and they uh, control the the White House. So that's called a government aligned in partisan ways, a unified government. Okay. The president, two branches of two branches of Congress. Republicans should be able to get anything done that they want, yet we've seen failure uh, for seven months, um, and most notably, um, most no and failure. we've seen some grand failures over the last seven, seven months okay. that shouldn't happen in a system that's so aligned. And, and uh, uh, what we've seen is, you know, the, the example, the ready example, and probably the most obvious example of that is the health care and repeal and replace, where the president campaigned for six years or whatever. I don't know how he's campaigned, but it seems like a long time, all from the beginning, repeal mm -hmm. and replace. Republicans have tried to do that uh, for seven years. Uh, now we have a president, uh, you know, Obama's gone, hey, but not forgotten, and uh, he'll be back. And he's really not going anywhere anyway, but uh, still, he's gone and he can't exercise his veto, and so. Uh, on this, on his, on his singular domestic policy uh, uh, success, uh, advancing health care opportunities for, for those that, that can afford uh, insurance for themselves, a great historic achievement in my opinion, uh, and they've been uh, dedicated. Right? Now they've got a president, so the, the smart money would would have said six months ago it'll be gone by by now by August. Well. No, it's not, and it was a spectacular failure three weeks ago now, I guess, uh, in the Senate, uh, as, the, as the Senate failed by, a, by one vote uh, to uh, repeal Obamacare. That shouldn't happen. You know, you know that's decorum. Uh, that's a lack of decorum, if you like to use that word. I, I like to use the, the principles of checks and balances. Okay. And uh, what the framers talked about in, in, in uh, established through our constitutional framework, those checks and balances should be uh, should be relaxed when you have a president and a Congress, right? President in both houses of mm -hmm. Congress, the same party should be going in the right direction, the same direction. In European democracies, this president would have had to step down. Uh, the government would have failed in a parliamentary system. Oh, wow. uh, but uh, this is a presidential system and we have fixed terms and um, the government did not fall and it will not fall. I hope your, your audience isn't entertaining these fantasies about the president leaving or being impeached anytime soon. No. You see that and see the mechanisms for that. Uh, he's not going anywhere uh, and um, he'll continue the way he is. Uh, one more thing, I know I'm taking up some time here, but no, go your ahead. question, um, example of this, it's unheard of for a Republican president to carry on with the majority leader of the U.S. Senate okay. and the singular, the most important player in Trump's plans to uh, uh, realize his agenda. Okay. And replace. Uh, tax reforms, mostly for corporations, uh, you know, lower taxes for corporations, uh, um, um, infrastructure improvements, <laughs> on and on, immigration reform. That's not going to go very well, it hasn't so far, and it's not going to go well in the future with the president engaging in a personal battle with the majority leader in the United States Senate. So would you suggest that what she is doing now? That people say people like me who don't have a lot of knowledge. I have some knowledge of, you know, how the setup goes. I don't know all of the positions in the White House and who's in what order. 
What you suggest? Who does? <laughs> so you, we, like today or you, well, tomorrow. just in general, we, we like change every day. Like if we were looking at, you know, any business has you know the supervisor, and managers, and everybody else. Like, would you suggest that people get to know who's in what position and what role they play? So that they can understand how these things are being carried. Like when a deci- when a I don't know if it's called a proposal, a bill comes to the floor, comes to the Senate. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Okay. However, a, a, a bill is proposed. Sure. You know, this is what sure. we would like to happen. Sure. Um, there's a process that goes along with that. I mean, sure. we see the the end, the backside of. Most of the time, when they show those little clips on, you know, TV, we're seeing the end of the of a discussion that's probably been held for months or hours or maybe, days. Maybe so. So we only get a little bit of what. Aren't you on Twitter? Yes. Um. Did you get the president's direct communications to you? I haven't signed up for. It. I don't You're, like a lot of notifications. Don't have I. Don't have I. But that's where it's happening. I learned a lot of it right now. Uh, unprecedented. You can call that the quorum if you like. Uh, the generals, uh, the generals put it. I'm not a fan of the generals, but one of the <laughs> one of the generals. Well, actually, actually, the is actually the uh, 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 one of the one of the heads of one of the branches of, of the military, uh, or maybe the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, Chair, Joint Chief of Staff uh, uh, Chair, said to the President. Uh, when given a tweet, you know, there was a tweet that we're going to not let transgender uh, 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 applicants into the military. We're going to throw the ones that are in there now, over a thousand or so, out. And he sent a tweet to that effect. And the general was asked, when are you going to implement that? He says, the tweet is not a, is not a lawful order. Well, <laughs> Nothing. We're not going to do that. That's the kind of the, uh, breakdown. I, we use that decorum okay. uh, that we see. It's, un, it's unprecedented. Uh, and uh, it's not. Uh, I was among those that kind of considered the possibility that the president, that candidate Trump, would become President Trump at some point. Okay. That's not happened, uh, at least as far as we can see it from the outside. You're right. There are a lot of things going on inside, but he has continued to act like a candidate, often and again continuing to tweet. Uh, his his uh, his wishes and his opinions about various folks in a way that uh, uh, you know you know you'd say I think you're thinking well there wasn't I call it twitting but <laughs> a, twi- a twi- Tweet, twist tweeting. a twit twits you know and it's a twit by a twit but uh, that's my <laughs> it's free country and I express myself uh, in, in, in in every opportunity and that's the way I feel about it. Um, you say it's about technology. Right? We never had that, right? but mm-hmm. it's a lot more than that. It's a president who, who uh, is a different sort. Never held office, elected office. Never been in the military. He's never mm-hmm. led. You know, he's led a company. Yes, led it to bankruptcy several times. But you know, yes, but he's been successful on other occasions too. Mm-hmm. So he's a he's a different kind of. He was a different kind of candidate. He ran a, ran a different kind of campaign. Okay. And he's running a White House uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like none other uh, before. And uh, a lot of it has to do with this, this decorum. He's not, he's not, some of your listeners are fine with that and, and even applaud it. The country's full of, you know, we get somewhere, he claims somewhere, you know, around 40 million people as his base. Well, let's, you know, let's take that with a grain of salt. But there's a huge base out there that could have stayed with him. Okay. They like this. They voted for him. So they say, they tell us, because he was going to conduct business in the White House differently. And they like the fact that he's not doing his business as president uh, in in the way that that historically the business has been done. So they like that. Okay. Well, I I don't. (laughs) Well, do you think that, um, and this is not about how we personally, again, how we personally feel about anybody in a position of power but do you feel that if no matter who's in that position man or woman black or white if they are in alignment with how the government was set up how the constitution is set up and what their job is supposed to be do you think that the country would then gravitate towards having a better mood and attitude would be in a better mood or be in, have a better attitude or be more mature about how they handle the country I would say the country doesn't have a mood it's 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 it's, right, it's anthropomorphic the okay. country doesn't have a mood the people the oh, sorry sectors of the people sectors of certain 
certain sectors of the population, right, okay. uh, uh, have are in a mood, um, and it's all over the place. It's hard. Okay. It's hard for me to generalize what that mood is. I know that that. Uh, we are divided, and what, what happened in Charlottesville was, was simply a, a symptom of that. It wasn't, right? It's been going on a long time, as you well know, and as your audience well knows. Uh, it's been going on a, a long time. It wasn't it wasn't begun by Trump. Uh, you know, wonderful if it was, and then when he's gone at some point, right? It'll go away, right? <coughs> well, no, 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 it's not. It's not like that. It's not that simple. What he did is, is tap into it. Uh, to uh, during the campaign, tapped into that potential. He looked at you know, it is is a make America great again. He tapped into the the angst, the 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 uh, uh, insecurity, right? Okay. Uh, of of a whole sector of this country, perhaps perhaps 40 million people, you know, those people that voted for him. Uh, and there's nothing more important to explaining the, the election outcome, I think, than, than that. He tapped into some concerns, and it, it's more than concerns, family after family that have not, uh, they brought some wealth and income distribution, but I don't think I'll ever get to it. But, uh, we, can, we can try to, to get into far, it. To say how far, you know, how, how, how bad things have gotten, uh, not under Trump, but uh, you know, for the last 30 years in terms of income, maldistribution, poor distribution yes. of income, and even worse distribution, that it concentrated wealth at the, at, in the top 10%, top 1%. It's extraordinary how, how, those, how those statistics have grown. They're not just statistics, the, those at the other end, the, at the bottom and in the middle, haven't seen uh, uh, any, uh, any uh, they've been frozen. They see their jobs are dead end jobs. If they're and they're lucky, to, they feel it often. They feel the new normal is I'm lucky to have a job, even yes. if it's a dead end job. They're not realizing benefits from what the economists say is a, is a heated up economy today. Uh, they're not seeing. Most of a lot of us aren't seeing that. Um, and there's Trump figured that out. It was pretty easy, right? He used the media. He said outrageous things. Some of which he meant, many of which, you know, I suspect it was just, just that they were an attempt to get, get attention, and he yes. got free publicity. Uh, he got free. He, he didn't spend a lot of. He spent his own money, and he didn't, didn't, uh, but he didn't break any records. Hillary uh, Clinton spent far more, uh, going the traditional way through political parties and volunteers in all the states and organizing and. He just went straight through using some of his money and then using the media, okay. right? free publicity, free. And then he was on shows for a year every day. Um, and what he did was was capture the attention through the media of that of those millions, tens of millions of people out there. They were angry. Uh, we ought not to uh, um, overlook that. We, are, we need to we, at, at our peril. We will overlook that. They're not going anywhere uh, when Trump goes, whenever that is. I would say for three and a half years, that's what yeah, I would I mean, say. But he's, already, he's already running again, as you well know. He began running for president okay, four years from now, right? He began running for president the day after inauguration, January 20th. He set up his committee and he's raising money and he's making campaign speeches around the country not and shifting he's got a president cap he wears and he's got a campaign cap he wears supposedly he keeps that secret separate and we didn't pay for his trip uh, and his family's trip to Phoenix last week uh, but that was billed not as a he wasn't there as the president he says <laughs> what well, was there as candidate right for <laughs> for, for 2020 uh, this is decorum again, isn't it? Nobody's ever done this, and I'm not sure that, you know, okay. <laughs> and it, it's, things are different. Will things, your question, will things get back to normal once Trump's gone? Mm. I, I don't know, it depends. Well, uh, even it depends on a lot of things. These, these, fo these folks that are supporting him, they, they still, they're still with him after all of this stuff. All these twits and all these, you know, all these, you know, you know this, this, here you have the majority leader, the insider, the consummate, the most powerful man in the, in the Congress, saying, 
openly that he wasn't sure how stable the president of the United States is. Okay. Right? I mean, this is this is, didn't happen overnight. This is this has been going on, and it's coming, and it's there's no reason for us to believe it won't continue to go. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know where the Russia thing is going to go. And we don't know. You, you know, we know that was a factor. We don't know where that's going to go yet. I think that uh, we'll find out at some point, perhaps. But, but these things don't always. And uh, you know, in a way that you expect to land with some kind of conclusion, they don't. No. Uh, they don't. So it's an interesting time. I'm I'm excited about it. I like talking. You know, I like <laughs> hearing the students' views, trying to get them to talk about it, uh, because they have a big stake in this. Has he changed America forever? Well, I mean, uh, uh, times are changing America. Globalization is changing America. Uh, it has nothing to do with Trump. Uh, globalization is changing. Uh, you, you, threats from external forces, you know, uh, nuclear nuclear weapons, and, and the lack of you know our, our success of our efforts to stop proliferation of nuclear—that's changing America. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to get ready to take a break. When we come back, I do want to tap into. Um, talk a little bit about the political parties, conservatives versus liberals, how we are more alike than we think. So I want to get into that when we come back. Stay tuned. We'll be right You're listening back. to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What mistakes should you let your kids make? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. It's hard to know when to let go and let your kids, especially your teens, make mistakes or even fail. But sometimes letting your kids make mistakes is the best way to help them learn. Here's a simple list to help you determine when it may be okay to let your kids make some mistakes. First, let them fail a test. Sometimes all it takes is one bad grade and one consequence to wake them up to the importance of studying. Second, let them run low on gas. If they haven't handled their money wisely, they may not have enough to fill it up and go where they want to go. For the rest of the mistakes you should let your kids make, check out my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Want to keep up with Mark off the air? You can. Follow him on Twitter, twitter.com slash markmerrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. When life takes a wrong turn, what do you do? When things are looking at their worst, who do you turn to? KLEK 102.5 FM and Massey Productions presents the inspirational gospel stage play To Hell and Back, a story that will inspire you, renew and reaffirm your faith, featuring performers from all over Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. One big show, 12 noon, Saturday, September 16th at the Epic Center, 1899 County Road, 333 Hasbrook Road in Jonesboro. Tickets are $10 in advance, $15 at the door, and can be purchased at KLEK, Cool Cuts, The Epic Center, or by calling 870-277-1080. Bring the entire family Saturday, September 16th before the A-State UAPB game to the Epic Center to see the inspirational gospel stage play to hell and back. This event is a KLEK fundraiser. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lsci-help.com. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. 
Support for KLEK is brought to you by Fullness of Joy Ministries, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, under the direction of Bishop Adrian Rogers and co-pastor Susan Rogers, www.fojministries.org. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kabila Hardin, and we're speaking with Dr. Richard Wang, who is a political science professor at Arkansas State University. So in the first part of the show, we've been you know, talking a little bit about political decorum and how things are kind of going and how we wish they were going. And that's, this, this could be a never-ending debate, but what I want to get into now is, you know, I see so many things on Facebook and I try not to get caught up in the conversations because you it can bog you down you know one way or the other um, if you get caught up in all these people's comments because on a keyboard behind a keyboard or behind a computer screen people can say some of the nastiest ugliest things to people they have no that they don't even know and it's sad that if they actually met that person in person they might either like them or they might work with them you know they could benefit some benefit from each other in some way, but you're just seeing a name on the screen. You don't know who this person is, you know. And so you're just saying anything that you want to say, you know, back and forth. And I've seen so many comments about conservatives, this liberals, that, you know, both parties, both both sides are throwing mud at both at each other, you know. Okay, one thing I learned um, in my sociology classes is that. We are actually more alike than we think. Yes, you know, liberals tend to be more socialist minds, have a socialist mindset, whereas conservatives maybe have a more capitalistic mindset, and that's a whole other topic within itself. Um, however, when it comes to certain policies, policies, procedures, and you know, things that will help benefit the American public, we are more alike on in some ways than we think. We just have chosen not to be mature about it and I just want to know do you think or can we <laughs> come back together somehow stop acting like two year olds on a playground he hit me no she hit me and you know this back and forth can we find some middle ground is it possible <laughs> well um, you said liberals I gotta catch you liberals they have a more socialistic well, from point what of view, and, and I want to. I wish they did. They oh, don't. they don't. No, they don't. Oh, they, I'm sorry. They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're about limited government and private property. Of course, you know, uh, 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 is is, a, is something that brings the Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives together. Limited government. It's the proper role of government, as we say in class. And the liberals and conservatives differ around the margins, but for the most part, okay. Uh, they they want limits. Uh, they want to focus on, on uh, the individual and private property, and, and um, they're they're rather um, uncomfortable about about government reaching into areas uh, you know, um, that uh, such such as redistribution of okay. wealth and income and doing anything about what I mentioned the last twenty minutes or whatever okay. income wealth uh, concentration. Uh, nobody really, either side, if, if there are just two sides, and there are more okay. two sides, would would be comfortable with with um, with those kinds of reforms. I don't know how we change that. It's continuing and it's huge. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a huge factor. Uh, the, to me, almost the the elephant in the room. You know, we we agreed not to talk about it. It one percent controls at forty percent of the stacks. Uh, it's, it's just it's it's obscene and, and it cannot continue as someone once said you know if if something can't continue then it will stop okay. <laughs> well uh, that sounds good but uh, there have to be steps taken and the only way the only the only the only step possible in our system right now is the tax system uh, and you see we're going in the other direction with Trump uh, wanting tax cuts that will benefit for the most part that one or ten percent uh, and and you and I uh, won't realize you know any, any benefit at all the concern is with that not, not with not with moving it moving away but continuing to allow uh, the accumulation of wealth and income among fewer and fewer people 
um, now you know where we could where we could intervene as a country, but you don't hear it. Neither side, Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, they're not talking about it. But to me, the the necessary, though not sufficient, condition for beginning to turn ourselves around it begins with campaign finance reform. Okay. It's it's boring. People's eyes glaze over. Oh no, <laughs> you know, we can't talk. Oh no, it's it, well, it's important. Without without campaign finance reform, without getting some of the private dollars, the Koch brothers, etc. And it's, you know the liberals have their side, their their dollars too, their money. George Soros. Money. Yes, the role and and others. They uh, they the influence that this money has on contemporary political elections at the top, the presidential election in Congress, all four thirty-five seats, hundred seats in, in the Senate, um, and in state. States like Arkansas, it's everywhere. In judge races, in judiciary, judicial and, races and, where states have... Uh, and, and, uh, Guns, you're not allowed to interrupt me. Okay. No, <laughs> well, no, I was actually just going to give you an example, a, a real-world example of the uh, effect of the amount of money in politics. Uh, when I worked in uh, commercial radio uh, at the station in Helena, it was a, a black radio station, um, and there was the... Uh, Senate race between uh, the incumbent at the time, Blanche Lincoln, and she was being challenged by Bill Halter in the Democratic primary. And both campaigns made a huge push to target ads towards black owned radio stations. And I remember I was working there every week, both campaigns were going back and forth, sending commercials and checks. Uh, and I'm, when I mean sending checks, I'm going to talk about a few dollars here. Now, these are like thousands of dollars. The check, we would get the email saying, run this spot. The check is was, is in the mail, FedEx. Sure enough, the next day, the check was in the, in, in the FedEx package. And um, in fact, that, I won't give the exact numbers, but basically the station ended up making good high five figures off of just that one primary. In fact, my boss said, hey, I just bought me a new transmitter just off of this one race. And the transmitter is a $20,000 piece of equipment. So that kind of gives you see, an idea money, of the kind of money. That's money well spent, isn't it? Uh, it's, that's money well spent by the campaign, seems to me. But we're, you know, we're just, and that's good to me. I don't. But what what we're talking about is, you know, millions. Yeah, for the TV, of for the TV ads, if, of dollars going into a campaign from a few, from a, you know, a source that's you know one or two, one or two folks, uh, and there are no limits. Um, so when you when you talk about campaign reform, you, you have to go there. You have to go where this money is, and you have to say, okay, um, um, we don't care. If money isn't uh, isn't speech. Okay? The court, the court, famously said, money is speech. We need to we need another. And they also said corporations are people. Corporations are people, and they, 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 the same thing, isn't it? Because they, that's corporate money, and and uh, uh, those that those that that uh, target it to races are. Uh, uh, entitled to First Amendment protections, freedoms of speech. It's for most people, the common person. That's an absurdity. But for the for the five justices that that uh, that uh, that uh, voted for approved, it. approved this uh, and wrote this opinion, uh, and it is the law of the land today. It, it made sense. And for, it and for those you that sense for democracy, it and does not. And for and Quibilin, for those of you that uh, don't know, uh, Dr. Wang is talking about the Citizens United case. Okay. Um, have you read our Facebook comments? I don't see any. Well, we have two from Gail Raspberry. Oh. Uh, two questions for Dr. Wang. My my phone is famous for crashing. Um, give me just a second. Well, one of them I know offhand was Gail Raspberry wanted to know Dr. Wang's comments on President Trump's pardon of Sheriff. Uh, I can't pronounce any R poet, but the I'm sheriff in, in, in a... Joe, Joe Arpaio. Okay, Joe Arpaio. Yeah. So she wants to know, what is your opinion of the pardon of the sheriff and of President Trump's covert endorsement, endorsement of racist? Again, this comes from Gail Raspberry. I think I know you, Gail. You're, okay, you're, I mean, there, there aren't too many raspberries in Jonesboro. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Gail's very outspoken. Yes, you, yes, you, yes, you, yes. you know her. I'm going to be very careful. No, I'm <laughs> not. I, look, uh, and Monday, the, everybody knew this was coming. Uh, uh, the only reason he didn't do it the week before in, in Phoenix in his political rally is that it was a political rally. He might have had some, 
some problems with, um, with that, but um, everybody knew it was coming and he did it on Monday. Uh, was it Monday? I think yesterday or the day before? Yesterday, I think. I, I know it's been recently um, yeah. because it was in the midst so of the hurricane coverage. Knows this is, this is the, the, the sheriff. He had been around a long time. Uh, he, he was no longer, he's no longer sheriff, hadn't been sheriff uh, uh, for a few years. But, but um, the, the uh, trial court um, convicted, he was convicted of a misdemeanor offense in, in mm. trial court, in state court in, in, in Arizona. And the offense uh, to which, uh, for which he was uh, looking at some jail time, uh, there was no sentencing yet, pre-sentencing, before he was sentenced, that offense was uh, for defying a court order. The court had ordered him to cease and desist uh, uh, his practice as sheriff, um, past practices as sheriff, of uh, um, singling out uh, Latinos for, for uh, 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 tension uh, based on his sense that they could possibly be illegal uh, immigrants. And um, that the court ruled that it was unconstitutional and uh, ordered him to cease and desist. He would not, uh, so he was further charged with, with a, uh, an offense that, that, that was a misdemeanor. Uh, okay, the president has the right to uh, commute a sentence, to pardon someone. Uh, in this case, he pardoned him. The sentence goes away. All that goes away. It's not on his record. Not that he cares. He's 80-some years old, but uh, <laughs> but still, uh, presidents do that. Bill Clinton famously did that on the way the out. The Mark Rich pardon. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was horrendous. People, you know, what? Uh, yes, um, all of them do it. This president did it early in his, in his, uh, his first one, early in his term, uh, much earlier than most. There were a lot of political consequences to this. Uh, and he did it before the, the individual, uh, as he calls uh, uh, Sheriff Joe, uh, he was very popular in Arizona by Trump, Trump's face in Arizona. He did it before there was a sentencing from the court, so the, it wasn't right. And most people would say this is not right for a, for a pardon. You wait until there's a sentence, you see if you, you're the president, you're the president's people, you see if the sentence makes any sense to you, maybe it's overreaching, okay. You wait for a little contrition, maybe, you know, Sheriff Joe says, uh, well, maybe I should have done, you make, you make him do a little, and then you say your pardon, uh, you know, uh, bless you, whatever he says. And to uh, add to that. That didn't happen this time, huh. it didn't happen. He just went through like he does, right? And so. Many argue, and I would, I would argue maybe along with him, that this is defiance from the president, right, to the courts. He's done it before. He's called out federal judges. He's done things that lack of decorum. It's, it's certainly, I would say, it, it rises beyond, you know, that you know, decorum. It's not a court decorum. This is checks and balances, checks separation and balances. of powers, okay. right? That judge, because he's, he's a Latino, isn't qualified to... Get, Oh, this is this is unprecedented stuff. And here's another one, right? In your face, courts, right? I'm the president. I'm going to do this. It's really, really not done. And and uh, well, it has been done. So um, I'm obviously appalled. At it. Yes. And w one other thing I want to add to that. Um, typically, in the pardon process, typically attorneys from the Justice Department will review the case, look mm -hmm. at the circumstances, mm -hmm. and they will actually make a recommendation mm -hmm. to the president, uh, no matter who the president is, on whether this is a, a case that he should pardon. Now, ultimately, the president can uh, accept or reject the recommendation, but in this case, um, that procedure wasn't done. There was no review by the Justice Department, as uh, Dr. Wayne said. Uh, that well, you're so right. Yeah, you're so right. Oh. All right, so Kabila, you you kind of looking like right, dumbfounded. Like, <laughs> like they're just maybe so I should have stayed. Maybe I should have stayed no. out. No, <laughs> um, you actually have helped. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that other people like me um, have questions about that they just don't know where to get started. We what have to no focus phone calls. On. We have no phone calls. No, I'm sorry. Well, no. like oh, we, so we got Miss Raspberry yesterday. <laughs> well, you know, well, like I said, you know, like when we had uh, Doctor Danfus on yesterday, um, like we're oh, talking yeah. about. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, you know, a lot of people now make comments on social media. It kind of just shows how the technology has evolved. Um, people like to interact more, yes. you know, with the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the 
uh, texting and whatnot. So it's 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 definitely evolving. And, and I guess we can use that to kind of transition into something else with the rise of social media is how we actually discuss politics. You know, I'm sure you know back in the day, and you could obviously you have more experience than I am do, but you could basically you know people would talk politics in the churches and the coffee shops the barber shops um, and that's where people who of like-minded ideologies whether liberal or conservative could you know discuss the issues of the day well now you can go on your social media and you can basically find like-minded individuals uh, to um, discuss your political views and it's had positive and negative consequences the positive is obviously information can get out much quicker and get to a wide audience but the negative is now you have more of what's called an echo chamber to where people basically can make the choice to only expose themselves to content and views that fit their ideology instead of opening themselves up to something that is different and that is kind of hardened people political views and has contributed negatively negatively excuse me to the discourse so dr wayne what's your thoughts on that well i don't think you don't think it's anything new i think i don't want to call it human nature but it's 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 pretty it, it's it's fairly common that commonly noted that that individuals tend to seek out people like themselves um and and whether that's skin color or social economic status or um, ideas, you know, uh, ethos, uh, values, or political ideas, ide ideology. We, if you get back from the barn, and it's something I, I'm from rural upstate New York, you, know, you get back from the barn, fire and ash, right? So you're not looking at boards, you're looking at the barn, and you get perspective. Um, you see, that that's all things being equal. That's that's fairly common that we that we tend to want to be to talk with people that have that share our values and share our opinions um, and so I call you know the, the literature called, this is consonant right that with sounding consonant values consonant uh, ideas that fit with us make us comfortable as opposed to a, a dissident ideas ideas that that are opposed to ours and that make us think and make us uncomfortable and we're, we're fairly lazy you can call it that way <laughs> yes. as simple as that about energy we don't want to be bothered uh, because dissonant ideas unless we just let them go by right and go another way which we do for the most part uh, if, if we try to entertain them uh, that's called work I mean it's hard it's work you have mm -hmm. to reevaluate how you're thinking so the challenge in a classroom certainly it, 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 it when freshman classes is is to is to try to make them uncomfortable these students without <laughs> without you know, letting you know without offending or without scaring yesterday I wasn't real good at that but <laughs> scared them a little bit but make them uncomfortable with ideas that they aren't comfortable with you know and they, okay let's talk about this so let's be able to talk across right across these these divides um, the problem has always been there. Social media has exacerbated it. I think is the way to look at it. Made it much tougher. Um, it made it, you know, these these kids, um, these kids have grown up with this. So it's a huge problem. You can't, you know, it starts. I'm holding out my left hand here, and it starts right there. I mean, the changes in these kids over the last decade, just a short period of time, over the last decade, is are profound in my classes, in my yeah. classroom classes especially. They're just not the same kids. Uh, attention spans aren't there. Their willingness to again engage in free thought, uh, in, in 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 their curiosity, which which is again without without curiosity, we don't have a chance. Okay. Uh, and a lot of them just simply lack that curiosity. They're not curious about other people. They they they're confirmed in their values by their chats and their tweets and so their you know they're confirmed. Everybody feels this way. They're more comfortable yeah, yeah, yeah. with their own little small circle versus. It's sometimes it's a, big, their mindset sometimes it's a big circle, but yeah, they're more comfortable. They don't within like-minded right. instead of right. opening their mindset up to possibilities of another thought yeah. process. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking for yourself is another way of looking at it. You know, hey, you have a you know, say you have eyes to see, you have ears to hear. They're yours. Learn to use them. Uh, and when you when you lose that, 
it, when we lose that capacity to trust our eyes and our ears as individuals, our system of self-governance is, is gone. Um, that's the last refuge. And, and, and I see that happening some. I see that happening. They don't trust their eyes, their ears. Um, and they don't trust themselves to make judgments about what's, what's fact, what's not. Um, and that's, a, you know, and they're not curious, uh, with a lot of exceptions, right? With a lot of exceptions. Right. An amazing lack of curiosity. And we're going to leave it right there. We're speaking with Dr. Richard Wang, professor of political science at Arkansas State University. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break. This is Kate, L.E. K. on 2.5 FM. Big stuff, you know. I, I, I <laughs> um, when I, you were talking about on social media, you're listening to Community Conversations you know, on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What well, left or right? And I try to make a conscious effort to like pages on both ends, you know, because it's it's actually interesting. To you know, see what the other side says, you know, and um, matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Today course, we're talking you know, about the I'm, compulsive you know, spending. If this is you, you view there, spending as a form of recreation, like as retail like, therapy, you know, red, or as a way to socialize or deal with or avoid negative emotions. But, you know, Unfortunately, these are all just ways to say self medication, which is why compulsive spending so often becomes an addiction. Signs to look for include hiding your spending <laughs> well, from it, others and relationship conflicts due to your spending habits. There's only one legitimate reason to spend. You have a genuine need of what you are buying and you budget it for the expense and can't afford it. If you are spending because you're angry or depressed or being driven by some other emotion, spending will only temporarily distract you from the real root of your problems and like most addictions, will often make them worse. If you can't stop compulsive spending on your own, and many people can't, get help. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Make Money Matters is, is made possible wrong. by the Jonesboro yeah. Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority yeah, Incorporated, a nonprofit organization <laughs> but, hey, dedicated to uncompromising course, you know, commitment to community, is, service, leadership, we, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumnidst.org. Uh, so. Money Matters is brought to I, I, you by Bank you know, Bookstop, offering to checking, like savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth hours. management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bankcorpstop.org. from 3 o'clock p.m. Pers- to 5 rich o'clock p.m. Off with Uber Broadcast is live well, from Mrs. Polly's Motivational figure, figure Barbecue Sense 8B in the on the corner of Nettleton <laughs> Avenue and Caraway Road so, in Johnson. Yeah, we also want to thank Mrs. Polly yeah. for sponsoring our giveaway. Yeah. Your motto is, we do it for you. And we're doing it for you, Jonesboro. We're giving away $102.50 Saturday, September 9th. You want the money? Don't meet us there. Beat us there. No more discrimination. No more everything. Everybody's equal. Attention, members and guests. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated presents Animal Instinct Post Game Party Saturday, September 16th after the A State UAPB football game at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue in Jonesboro from 9 o'clock p.m. until 1 o'clock a.m. This is a 21 and up event. A portion of the proceeds will benefit the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. More information is available via any member of the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Post Consumer Brands is seeking to hire five operators at their Jonesboro facility. Post offers good starting pay, three weeks of paid vacation, comprehensive benefits, $15 with employee match, and frontline incentives while working four days on and four days off. More information is available at jobs.postconsumerbrands.com. 
Post Consumer Brands is an equal opportunity employer. Sharks Auto Plaza, your pre-owned superstore, is a longtime supporter of KLEK. 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard, Starks offers clean, reliable vehicles of all makes and models. Starks also offers no-hassle pricing, friendly service, financing options with approved credit. At Starks, you're always family, and our motto is, we never say no. 870-203-9980. StarksAutoPlaza.com. Arkansas Early Learning prepares children up to five years old for kindergarten by offering a secure learning environment. Qualified teachers at several locations in Northeast Arkansas at no cost. Applications are available at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. From the KLEK community calendar, there will be a free community workout every Sunday and Tuesday starting at 6 o'clock p.m. at Allen Park and every Thursday night also starting at 6 o'clock p.m. at Parker Park. More information is available via Arlicia Baker at 870-273-3437. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK with our guest, Dr. Richard Wang, Professor of Political Science at Arkansas State University. It's always a pleasure to have Dr. Wang in the studio. It's always a good, lively, interesting um, political discussion. And Quabila, I hope you learned something today. Oh, I'm learning to stay in my own lane and just... Breathe. <laughs> hey, your own lane. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna try to become more informed, of course, and you know, make decisions. But I'm not gonna get caught up in everybody else's yeah. commentary, and then I get lost. And you realize that's a yoga thing. I'm sorry. And you should come and do yoga with me. Okay. okay so you stay on your own mat. Okay. okay. It's a great metaphor for for life. I mean, I do want to help other people, and I do want to get involved, but I don't want to get so involved that I get lost and confused and upset and angry and emotional, you know, and then I'm no good to anyone. So. Well, you always have me to talk to. <laughs> All right, we want to give Dr. Wang this opportunity. Dr. Wang is also a supporter of KLEK, and he wanted to just talk a little bit about his support of KLEK and how others, whether you agree with him or disagree with him, can support as well. Yes, uh, I am a supporter. Uh, I, I am grateful for the opportunity to, to visit this morning and, and uh, with your audience and with you guys. I, uh, it's fun. I enjoy it. Thank um, you. I do. Uh, and it's an extraordinary opportunity. There's no place else to go in, in Northeast Arkansas to do this, is there? Uh, Not that I know. <laughs> really. So it's, it's, you know, it's rare and it's, therefore, it's, therefore it's special. Uh, it's special to me. I'm about to write a check, or I'm writing a check now, uh, to support this effort. It's not a huge check, but everybody knows what I do for a living. Uh, and I'll keep doing that. Uh, you know, it's, not, it's not symbolic, it, it'll help a little bit, but in part it is symbolic. I, it's symbolic of my, my support for this effort. Uh, it's a very difficult effort. There's no room for, there's no margin. I know that. There's a little, very little net out there. Again, Z, I don't know how you guys do it. I, I, By the grace I, of God. I think I think it's heroic. I do. You're one of my heroes in this town. Well, thank uh, you. This is this is a you know a task. I know you do it for love, out of love, but it's a task that's uh, got to be stressful. Uh, it, 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 a lot of stress, and so you need you need your listeners and you need folks like me to come forward and say I appreciate this effort the town is better for you being here thank you uh, the city we we need you here we need you to be successful uh, and, and here's my here's my uh, here's my contribution to that effort uh, so listeners out there and uh, you know come forward it's time to stand up um, and, uh, and do your part it's and great, it, it's a great effort and, and thank you both for being here. I appreciate it. We really and, and appreciate you. And we thank you, Dr. Wang. And of course, if you would like to donate, as Dr. Wang has just donated, there are several ways you can do so. Um, if you're old school and you, you don't want to mess with, you know, online and all that technology stuff, you can come by our studio. We're at 1411 
Franklin Street. You can deliver in person. It can be cash. It can be check. It can be a credit card. We do have a credit card swiper thingy here. Um, you can go on our website. It is back up. It was down for a bit, but it is back up. It's klekfm.org. There is a PayPal button in which you can click. Um, you can donate one time or you can set it up to do an automatic monthly draft. You can also mail it. The address is 1411 Franklin Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. Once again, the address is 1411 Franklin Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. We appreciate each and every one of you support. And also keep in mind, your donations are tax deductible. So, you know, when you when tax time rolls around, you know, this is something that, you know, you can write off. You can used to reduce your tax burden or even make maybe get the money back in the form of a tax refund so it there's a little bit of personal benefit to you and one of the things one of our future goals is as more and more people support is we plan on putting on more events and having gift items and things that we can do to show our thanks for our supporters but uh, we definitely even though we may not can give you a nice t-shirt or a coffee a nice yeti mug or something for your <laughs> thanks but sincerely from the bottom of our hearts we do thank you um, we we do love what we do uh, we do this for you um, day in and day out uh, because we really want to make a difference in the Jonesboro community and we want to give others opportunity and we like to use this platform to let people who uh, want to make a difference in the Jonesboro community um, speak out so we've got three minutes I'm gonna let Dr. Wang have the last word <laughs> we're really oh. I want to say I appreciate you too, Dr. Yeah. Wayne. I'm in a rush for words. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, thank you. Thank you both for, for this opportunity. Maybe you'll call me again and we can work it out and so I can come back. Um, and, look, I don't know how much time I have. Three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, we are in dire, uh, one of my favorite rock and roll bands, uh, Dire Straits from, from way back. Uh, we're in dire straits. Uh, and politically, I, I believe that. I think we ought not to take it lightly. There's a lot of entertainment value, and I use that in the classroom, and I appreciate Trump for that. Uh, he, 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 right, he gives us gives us a lot to talk about, and some of it's quite quite entertaining. Uh, and, and we, you, the framers anticipated a, a Donald Trump. That's why they established a limited government. There are checks and balances, and so far those checks and those balances have worked. Uh, over the last seven months, for the most part. Uh, yes, when we talk about Sher Sheriff Joe, uh, here's an opportunity to say, wait, the checks didn't work, right? The courts have been defied, right, by the executive. That's not supposed to work that way without due process, you know, and so without, without a procedural check. So this is dangerous stuff, but for the most part, the courts have said on immigration, no, you can't do that. You can't ban this population from these six six countries. You can't do that and state it. And the president has not been able to, to move around that. Those are checks that the framers put. Just in case we came up to with a, with a Donald Trump. Uh, we've all known Donald Trump. So he'll, he'll go at some point. Uh, and the system will continue. Uh, and the checks and balances we're going to find, I think, will be stronger for a Donald Trump that pushed him every day of his residence. He pushed them. They pushed back and we found you know, perhaps as a people, as a, as a citizenry, coming together, uh, celebrating the efforts of the framers. I criticize them like crazy, but sometimes, but, you know, they, they, <laughs> those checks that they established, right, way back, those checks are still there, they work. Maybe they're even stronger now before Donald Trump. At least the people respect, they understand more about checks and balances, and respect those checks and balances. And that means they're going to be a little stronger. And that's a good thing. We're looking for something good to come out of this mess. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it is a mess. Uh, and there's maybe, there's maybe something we can look at. Thanks a lot for, for inviting me. And Dr. Thank Wang, you. once again, thank you for stopping by the studio. You're certainly welcome to come back anytime. Stay tuned. More KLK, more KLK is on the way. May God bless each and every one of you. Have a great day. This is KLK 102.5 FM. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering